All right, welcome, welcome everyone. If you're watching, um, if you haven't been here before, my name is Wolf. This is Elizabeth. She is a certified Weiss Method practitioner. And we're here talking about the Weiss Method. And specifically, we're talking about how the Weiss Method helps treat different dependencies. Um, we've spoke on a number of different dependencies in the past. I think we've touched on alcohol, nicotine, some weight management. There's a bunch of other ones you can check out. Um, but this week, we're gonna be specifically talking about marijuana use and how the Weiss Method helps treat and solve this dependency. Um, so Elizabeth, if you wanna dive in a little bit, you know we have other videos that actually talk about what the Weiss Method is in depth and how it works. But if you wanna give them just a little intro on the Weiss Method, how that works, I think that would be a great place to start. Sure. Um, so the Weiss method is a um, unique type of treatment in that it deals with the root cause of a particular uh, unwanted habit or dependency. Um, and it does that uh, with an energy-based treatment. And um, it basically, in a nutshell, cleans and rebalances um, a person's systems and it puts things back to a place in which they were meant to be. Um, so that is the, the nutshell version of what the Weiss Method is and does. Fantastic. And this week, we're specifically talking about how the Weiss Method helps um, treat a dependency on marijuana. Um, and that's one of you know, the big ones that the Weiss Method can help treat. Um, but kind of like, where does that dependency you know, arise from on marijuana? And kind of how does that differ from other ones like you know, nicotine, for example? Right. So, yeah. And there's different ways, there's different delivery systems similar to nicotine um, uh, for marijuana um, or cannabis or weed or pot, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's, it's all the same um, scenario. Um, so, you know, people can smoke it, as we know, or um, they can vape it. And, uh, and then there's edibles, there's, you know, there's a whole array these days. Um, that are available of different delivery systems for um, for marijuana and um, and at, as we know now it's much more prevalent in the legal world many states uh, it is recreationally legal or medically um, get a, a medical license uh, to buy it legally so that's all interesting um, so it's much more readily available um, so how is it different than the nicotine uh, in, a, in an addictive way? Um, I believe that having been a former smoker um, uh, of, of nicotine, that was a very addictive substance. It's like it, it, it really requires you to have it in your system can, almost continuously, um, you know, if you're uh, severely addicted to it. Um, except for when you sleep for some reason, you know? I, I never really heard of too many people having to wake up in the middle of the night and have a cigarette. Now, if they wake up in the middle of the night, they may have a cigarette, you know? Um, but that's different than, um, yeah. so anyway, how is it different? I believe it's not so much that the substance is, you know, extremely addictive. Um, it's more to do with the state that it produces that the person then becomes addicted to that state. So what is that state? It's a state of, you know, it, it, it changes your, the way in which you feel. Um, it puts you in literally like a different state, um, similar to alcohol in that regard, um, but different. I, it, I believe it affects different parts of the brain and so people are like, well, this is really good, or some part of them is because I don't have to think about or look at or, you know, be in whatever I was. Um, it changes their state. And so they get addicted to that feeling, that state of being, um, and they're basically able to check out. Definitely. And specifically with the Weiss method, how does, you know, what does the process look like with the Weiss method um, treating that dependency? How does that work? So similar to alcohol, it is a three treatment um, um, scenario because it, it, you know, it helps to 
reinforce the, the first treatment, which is when you always uh, stop whatever the dependency is. Um, and it, it works the same, you know, all the treatments work the same um, in that it's really the intention of the person and the practitioner um, as to what it is that's being treated um, and what, you know, the whole addictive cycle that needs to be interrupted so that um, the person then can be given back their, um, their decision-making power. Um, and that's something I wanted to talk a, a little bit about um, decisions <clears throat> because um, I know on some of the other videos we've talked about, you know, well, what is the why? You know, why would a person want to quit X? Um, and it occurred to me that, um, you know, really making uh, a decision is, it's not a very common thing these days. We think we make decisions all the time, you know? Um, and, you know, there's, there's actually, um, there's a little run I wanted to do about this and it's to do with the, the soul. And we haven't really talked about the soul yet. Um, mm -hmm. We did in an earlier um, uh, conversation talk about how the um, uh, energy works in the body. And we talked about the, um, the two different systems, the automatic system that we have, which keeps all of our systems going um, without us having to think about it. And then the systems that we have control over, which is what we choose to do. So this is another way into understanding those two different systems. And um, so I met, just mentioned the soul earlier and, and the soul, you know, people think it's sort of a mysterious, ethereal thing, but it's actually very basic. Um, it's gifted to us in our design so that um, it basically orchestrates all of our automatic systems on our behalf. Thank goodness, <laughs> because, yeah, because, yeah, you know, can you imagine if you had to think about making sure your heart was ticking, you know, when you were sleeping, it, 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 you know, it's like, that would be really hard. <laughs> you wouldn't want to fall asleep in case you, you know, messed up. But um, that's just one example. So we, I think it's pretty easy to understand what the automatic systems are, our digestion, our, you know, um, yep circulatory system, our um, breathing, our respiratory system, all of our different systems that, um, you know, allow us to, um, you know, live our lives. So the soul orchestrates those. So as an example, you know, like, oh, I need a drink of water. So my soul actually, <laughs> it, it actually um, goes and, and just, you know, says, okay, this muscle, you know, that muscle into action now, pick up that glass of water. That's what the soul does. I don't have to think about that, you know? Um, I, it just does it because I decided I wanted a sip of water. Now, what happens sometimes is that because, I mean, let me ask you this, Wolf. Um, when you were in high school or, you know, when you were in um, college, did you ever have a class of how to think? I actually kind of did in high school. I was in a special program where we had one. It was called theory of knowledge. And it kind of was that like the theory of how you think and make decisions. So, okay. little, but I feel like most people don't. Most people don't. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get to learn how to think at school. Most people have to figure it out. You know, yeah. and you know what your that class probably um, got really theoretical about the whole thing. It was very <laughs> theoretical. It was not like I've still had to learn. I think everyone has to learn how to think practically in one way or another. Yeah, that's, that's and been a journey. Yeah, so we don't really get taught how to think and how to make decisions in our lives, how to reason, how to go through a process where you come out the other end with you know um, a reason, a, a decision. Now mm -hmm. this happens, it happens, you know, in specialties, of course, you know, like if you become a doctor, you have to 
it's a, that's a whole huge educational process of, you know, does this patient need that operation or whatever. Um, but generally speaking, we're not taught how to think and make decisions. And what happens is, um, because there's a huge conformity in our culture, um, and you know that we could spend hours and hours upon o opening up and what that does. And because of that conformity, we're actually um, uh, trained out of thinking for ourselves. Which I think is one of the most important things a person can do is to learn how to think for themselves um, and not look around at everybody else and see what they're doing um, and, and then go, oh, OK, I'm going to do that because that's not them making a decision. That's yep. the soul going, OK, yes, I can do that for you if you want. It's picking up, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a habit. Um, because, you know, you say that's what you want. Um, and, you know, the soul can do that. But what happens when we don't make major decisions that we really should be making with our mentality? Okay. The mentality is the aura of the brain. It's a place in which all of our life's decisions, um, they're all stored in there. And so if I say to myself, oh, um, I have hay fever, therefore I'm never going to mow the lawn, you know, at this time of year, as an example. Okay. Um, so in my mentality, a little gate gets put up about mowing the lawn at, in June because of the pine pollen or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. and a little gate so that next year, um, oh, it's time to mow the lawn. Oh no, I can't do that. Um, I must get my husband to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I'll get, you know, whatever. So do we have this gate system that the mentality implements, right? Yeah. About decisions um, that we tell it we want. Um, but however, what happens is, and we'll get back to this state of um, that marijuana causes in a moment. Um, mm -hmm. Because we're not making the decisions, our soul we allow our souls, we, we automate it and allow our soul to then make the decision. I want that state again. Um, and the brain comes into this as well. We've talked about the brain, um, but I'm, I'm just kind of adding on. It's not quite as simple, you know, mm -hmm. as we earlier spoke about it. Nothing ever is, but it helps you get in the door. Yeah. Um, so I'll leave it there. Do you have any questions uh, at this point of... I mean, it makes sense. I think people, you know, make decisions on autopilot sometimes because they get comfortable and, you know, even people give themselves a boundary where maybe, you know, they tell themselves they can't do something like you said, for example, mowing the lawn, or even an example could be someone putting up a barrier when they're not ready to change something like, oh, I can't do that. I can't stop doing that because exactly, it's them, you know, and it's like, I think, people need to open their mind to just realizing that your mind is still, you can augment, you know, your, those gates, you can close that gate or you can open that gate and remove that gate if you want to, you know, I think people just need to realize that and be more open to it and, you know, understand that. And I know the Weiss method definitely helps people do that with these yeah. specifically. You brought up a good point because we do throw up um, barriers for ourselves, i.e. gates um, unknowingly that it's like uh, we box ourselves in basically um, into our life. And uh, uh, so we think we can't do things when all we have to do is decide to take, you know, to open that gate um, mm -hmm. and just go for it. It's mm -hmm. really as simple as that. We spend so much time and energy saying what we can't do um, in our lives that, you know, we, as I said, we box ourselves in. Yeah. So getting back to the, um, uh, you know, the state that marijuana causes is it's euphoric, you know, it's really um, uh, it's it's a state in which actually a person can get if they climb a mountain, Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's it you can open up those pardon the pun gateways, <laughs> um, uh, you know, in your brain in many different ways. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> The other reason why I want to bring up the decision making thing is because if we make a decision in our mentality for real, 
about what you don't want to do. Like I, I, I don't want to do, I, I want to stop, um, you know, basically coming home from work and getting high every day or ho however it, it is for a person. Um, I want to just stop that. And, you know, and then they reason through their, go through their reasons why, um, but they build that gate and it's a really good visual, um, you know, to think about, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. Cause I remember very, very specifically how that worked for me with quitting smoking. It became a no go area. Um, and it can, that can help, you know, along with the Weiss method, it helped me, you know, to keep that decision, um, uh, intact in myself. And it's an interesting word intact because mm -hmm. intact, I believe refers very much to how somebody is mentally arranged mm -hmm. and is their mentality in hat. Does it have uh, an intactness to it or is it loosey goosey all over the place? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, just, you know, a little bit more. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it gives people good visuals, you know, I think the gate idea of, you know, opening, you know, gates that need to be opened and, you know, also closing some stuff off and, you know, removing stuff from that whole mentality, I think is good. Um, yeah. You know, and I, it provides a good visual too, if you think about it like that. So, and more than anything, you know, I think it's really intention to do, to make that change and, you know, kind of segueing into, you know, back to the marijuana dependency and the Weiss method, you know, if someone really feels like, you know, they have kind of, like I said, the intention to remove that dependency um, and they, you know, they want to get started, you know, what are the steps to really get started with the Weiss method and get started to work with you? Sure. Um, simply, um, I always do a consult with uh, any potential client. It, gives an opportunity to see if, um, you know, the Weiss method is a good fit for them. Um, it gives me opportunity to ask questions, uh, whether or not, um, you know, they're really in a place to let this go. Um, so it's, um, it, it's usually, it's a phone consult, it's 15 or 20 minutes. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, we know from there going forward. And uh, so anybody can go onto the website, there's a contact form to fill out, weissmethodusa.com. Um, and, uh, um, you know, you'll get a response pretty quickly. Fantastic. Fantastic. And I guess the last thing to touch on is this, you know, give people a little taste or a little bit of like, what does it look like being on the other side of, you know, dependency like marijuana or any dependency? You get your life back. <laughs> um, you get to, um, you know, we talk about, okay, being in the driver's seat of your life. And, and although we, you know, I say that a lot, it's profound. Um, it's really profound, uh, to not have something else making decisions for you. That's really, really crucial. Um, and you know, being in the driver's seat of your life is you making your own life's decisions on your behalf, because who knows you best, but you, if you allow yourself to actually open yourself to that. So that's what I'd say about it. Absolutely. Well, if you made it this far, appreciate you guys watching. And if you're ready to get started with the Weiss method, link will be attached to this video, or you can go to weissmethodusa.com and um, start your journey. So we're excited for you guys and we appreciate you guys getting this far. All right. We'll call Thanks, it. Thanks everyone. Yep. See you soon.